Here we go. Everybody good with number one? And then number two, if you want to, by the way, if by accident you write one over, so it doesn't have to be sine and cosine. In other words, if you do secant y times one over secant y, you'll still get to where you want to go, which is one over one. All right. But again, they recommend you do sine and cosine because that way everything deserves that as you progress. Good? Everybody's good with that? So this is working with the left. I end up with one over sine x cosine x when I'm all done with all that. I took cotangent, which was in the denominator, moved it up to the numerator, and did the inverse. So the inverse of cotangent is tangent. So whenever you want to move something from the denominator to the numerator, you move it up. And this is all on the left side. So this is all that side. Good? Yeah. And again, if you did it a little differently, but you have the same premise, you're good to go. Because there are other ways. And then there's four. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I understand why you would flip the denominator and stuff, but when you, like, when you're going to set a step, where is the other sign and the cosine? Because that's what tangent is equivalent to. So everything you can rewrite in terms of sine and cosine. And what you're going to be able to do when you do that is, so, cosecant squared is 1 over sine. You remember that? Because yeah. that's in terms of sine. Tangent is sine over cosine. That's going to allow me to cancel oh, things out. Okay. Make sense? Because that's what you want. You want commonality. Because commonality is going to allow you to simplify. Good? Everybody good with that? Alright. All good? Now, see how this one's in terms of sine squared x? This one's in terms of sine squared x. Try to make sure you use that as a guide, which allows them to say cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared x minus sine squared x and then when you combine like terms you have 1 minus 2 sine squared x equals 1 minus 2 sine squared x which are exactly the same alright to make it as straightforward as possible with your Pythagorean identities, try to substitute the one that's isolated. So in your Pythagorean identity, secant squared is 1 plus tangent squared. When I add the 1 and the 5, I get 6. So this becomes tangent squared x plus 6. Tangent squared x plus 6. And yes, there will be one just like that one with Bitcoin. I'll be after today for extra help, by the way. Tomorrow there's a junior class meeting, so I can't stay after. So if you're staying after, make sure you do it today. And that quiz will be on Wednesday, and then later in the week, the first day. Last time we are. Where's this one plus two? Where did I come from? 
So if you do nothing else this week, you need these. Those are your Pythagorean ones. All right. So in other words, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. And then the other idea to make it as easy as possible for you is the cos stay together with the other one and the non-cos stay together. And secant and cosecant are always greater than 1. So they're always going to be the biggest. So that's the easiest way to remember. Tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared x. Cotangent squared x plus 1 is cosecant squared x. Since this was... I. Since if you look at Pythagorean identity, secant squared is all by itself. To me, that's the easiest one to substitute when you plug it in. That's where the 1 plus tangent squared x is. Good? There's seven. So in that five, six, seven category, you're going to have one like that on the quiz, where it's just substituting one Pythagorean identity for the other, and everything else is straightforward. Good. Because they're conjugates of each other, when you multiply them together, you get 1 minus sine squared x. And 1 minus sine squared x is equivalent to cosine squared x. The work on the right is where the cotangent squared x came from. Good. Another hint, by the way, if you have the same expression on both sides, change the one that doesn't look like the other. If the other one has a plus one, that's definitely one you're going to change. Because you've got to manipulate that to get yourself rid of the, the one. Unless you have that situation, like number eight, don't distribute through. All right, always substitute. So in other words, don't do one one cosine squared x plus cosine squared x cotangent squared x. Eventually you'll get there, but you're making your trip a lot longer. All right. Trig identities are like fractions, addition and subtraction is harder than multiplication and division. So this becomes one over sine x minus sine x over one. which becomes 1 minus sine squared x over sine x, 
which becomes cosine squared x over sine x. Now I'm going to look at the other side, which is cosine x times cosine x over sine x. Cosine x times cosine x is cosine squared x over sine x. And now your two sides are exactly the same. Good? Everyone's good? Alright. Sine x plus cosine x times cosine x over sine x. Again, when you have this much stuff going on, your first move probably is to write everything in terms of what? Sine and cosine. Sine x plus cosine squared x over sine x equals sine squared x plus cosine squared x over sine x equals 1 over sine x equals cosecant x. The premise for both of those, obviously, is finding a what? Common denominator. Good. Cosine x plus sine x times sine x over cosine x becomes cosine squared x plus sine squared x over cosine x equals 1 over cosine x, which equals secant x. If you only work with one side, you can just show the one side. If you work with both sides, as we sometimes have to do, then you got to show the work on both. Good. There we go. Since cotangent has a co, we drop it. That becomes tangent x cosecant x. Tangent is sine over cosine. Cosecant is 1 over sine. So by writing them all in terms of sine and cosine, now we have the sine x is canceling out. So you got 1 over cosine x equals cosecant x. And then finally, with your odd evens, the cosecant of negative x becomes negative cosecant x. The secant of negative x just automatically becomes secant x. Negative cotangent x. Gets rewritten or whatever. Sorry. Because secant x is in the denominator, you can move that up to the numerator and change it to cosine. Since cosecant is in the numerator, you can move it to the denominator and change it to sine. Negative over a positive keeps it negative, and then the negative cotangent x matches. All good? All right, you got about 20 minutes to work on the other one. Let's do tomorrow. Smiling Kayla, come on up. <laughs>